Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So if you've seen the title of this video, you obviously know what I'm gonna be talking about today. Um, this is definitely a video I hoped to never have a reason to make, um, but obviously you've seen from the title, um, I had a miscarriage. So I've had time to process this whole experience um, and I feel like very ready to like sit down and share the whole story. And there is one reason um, I wanted to do that, and that is just because when I was, you know, really going through this in the thick of it, the only thing that really helped um, at all was hearing other women's stories. Um, not just so that you didn't feel so alone, but also just to know what to expect and what was going to be happening, you know, to me, because it's just kind of a really crazy experience, at least the way that I went through it. Um, so that was the only thing that helped. So now that I'm ready um, to like share the story, I figured I wanted to sit down and do that because hopefully maybe someday it will help someone else, um, another woman who's walking through this. I wish that this would not happen to anyone else, but unfortunately the facts are that miscarriage is very common. Um, and I'm definitely, most definitely not the first woman to go through it, and I will unfortunately most definitely not be the last. So I figured I would just start at the very beginning um, when we got pregnant um, with baby number two. So if you guys are new to my channel, you don't know me, um, my name is Becca. I have a sweet baby girl, my husband and I. Um, her name is Hayden. She's just over one. She's like 15 months around there. Um, and she is the light of our lives. She is the sweetest. She is so fun. She brings so much joy <laughs> to us every single day. Um, and we were so excited to grow our family. Um, we envision, um, you know, multiple children in our family. We would love to have multiple kids. And um, it's just always something that we wanted and we've always wanted them really close, you know, fairly close in age. So this baby um, would have been 22 months apart, um, 22 months younger than our daughter Hayden, which just seemed like, I don't know, it just seemed like really good timing. Everything seemed to be going according to our plan that we, you know, had envisioned. Um, so we were super, super, super excited. Um, it took five months to get pregnant. Um, with this baby. So we were trying, we were ready, we were like just, we so badly wanted to continue to grow our family. So we were really, really excited obviously when we found out. I actually filmed like literally all of the tests that we took, negative and then finally the positive, um, and there was a ton. And I put together this whole video and I was so excited to post it when, you know, the time to announce the pregnancy came. Um, I honestly don't know if I'll ever share it now, we'll see. Um, but anyway, we were really, really excited because like I said, we had been diligently trying and we had been really wanting to, you know, get pregnant. So we were very, very excited. I will say though, something that is very weird. Um, and now in hindsight, I feel like on some level, I just had like this, maybe it was like mother's intuition. I don't know. But in the very beginning, um, when we first, we first took the test, I was so excited. And then a couple days later, we took, um, you know, a couple more tests just to like confirm. And I just got this weird feeling that I would never meet this baby and um, I remember staring at like the clear blue digital test that literally said pregnant and I was like I don't believe it and Matt was like I mean it, hello it literally says pregnant like you're pregnant relax like you're good you got it it happened and I was just like I just don't think this is I just I don't know I just didn't think that I, I thought I was gonna miscarry that's like what I, I just thought that this would never actually like come to fruition so with that being said, he was like, you know, I think you're crazy. It clearly says pregnant, like just like last time. Um, but I was like, I'm going to go get blood work done so that I can just put these fears to rest because I was just afraid. Um, like one of the tests I was looking at, a subsequent test that I had taken, one of the lines looked like a little bit lighter than the first one. And it, I was just really questioning everything. Um, so I did. I went in, I got blood taken. Um, I went to the birth center, which is where... Um, I had my daughter Hayden and um, got an HCG test um, and also progesterone got that checked as well and then went back 48 hours later same test 
So the results came back and they were perfect. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers, but my age first HCG was like within normal limits of you know like a four-week pregnancy and then within 48 hours it had more than doubled like a lot more than doubled so we were like whoo all right like I don't know why I was having this weird feeling but at that point I totally shook it off my progesterone was also really high I do remember that it was 35 and um, the midwife I spoke to um, let me know that they look for at least 20 so she was like your progesterone is looking beautiful that's indicative of a very healthy pregnancy like you are everything looks good so I was like okay whew, all right so totally shook off that weird feeling honestly kind of forgot about it you know blood test confirmed things are you know continuing as they should be everything should be fine um, and then around six um, and then really seven weeks just like like clockwork honestly and just like with my pregnancy with Hayden I started to get the exact same symptoms and I got very sick which I got very sick with Hayden as well so around that seven week mark I was pretty much in bed or on the couch um, all day like really sick um, not really throwing up I actually didn't throw up I don't think I threw up at all with that pregnancy um, with this pregnancy but I was just super nauseous, super achy, no motivation, no energy, like just a blob on the couch pretty much, which is exactly how I felt with Hayden and that went on well into the second trimester. So again, it was another sign that everything's going great um, and I was kind of thinking like if something were wrong, I just don't think I would be this sick again. Everything was lining up exactly identical to Hayden's pregnancy. So I it honestly never really crossed my mind that something could be wrong. So um, this was a complete blindside. I'm, I mean, a complete blindside. So um, we actually didn't have our first like appointment to check on this baby and this pregnancy until I was 10 weeks. Um, that is just when uh, the midwives, you know, at the birth center I go to, that's what they, um, it's kind of like the, guideline they follow. Um, now with Hayden's pregnancy, I actually went at eight weeks and I had an ultrasound at eight weeks. Um, and I was like really kind of anxious. Like I, I wanted to go at eight weeks because I just, you know, you want to like see the baby in the heartbeat and just like you're excited and you just want to kind of get out of this weird zone of like, I had the, I, you know, I know I'm pregnant because the test says so. I'm sick, but like I actually haven't seen anything. It's not like officially confirmed. It's just kind of like a weird place to be in. If you've been pregnant, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so I was really hoping to go at eight weeks, but we didn't go till 10 now in hindsight, biggest blessing ever because we would have seen the baby. We would have seen the heartbeat, everything would have been, and I think it would have been even more difficult, um, to come to terms with the end of this pregnancy, having seen that. So total blessing in disguise. So we didn't go until 10 weeks. We went to the midwife appointment. Um, it was on a Thursday and I was again, so sick. Everything was lining up the same. Blood work was checked out totally perfectly at the beginning of the pregnancy. Went in, had our normal appointment, um, you know, chatted with, it was actually a nurse practitioner um, at the birth center. And then at the very end, she did like a physical exam um, and we used a Doppler to try and find the heartbeat. Now, um, I knew going into this that Dopplers can be like a little touch and go um, as far as getting the heartbeat before 12 weeks. It can be difficult to find it. Doesn't mean it's not there, um, but it can be difficult. So I knew that going in. So I wasn't like, I almost kind of prepared myself that like we might not hear the heartbeat, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything is wrong. Um, so she did a physical exam. She said everything looks normal or, you know, feels normal, I guess. Um, <laughs> and... Um, and then we used the Doppler and we were not able to find the heartbeat. Um, she probably searched for like a good three to five minutes, like really, really tried to find it. And she was just like, you know what guys, I just don't think it's in the cards today. And I wasn't even concerned in the least. Cause again, I just, everything seemed normal with this pregnancy. I knew that it was hard to, um, it could be hard to hear the heartbeat on the Doppler before 12 weeks. I was just under 10 weeks. I think I was like nine weeks, six days. So I wasn't concerned. Matt had actually asked when she was like, yeah, we're not going to find the heartbeat today. He asked the nurse practitioner, he said, should we be like concerned? And she was like, oh no, 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 not at all. Like just everything that you're telling me from your symptoms and from your exam. And I would not be worried. I just don't think that there's, there's any, from what we're seeing, there's no cause for concern. So we're like, okay. Um, so she was like, I was planning on getting an ultrasound anyway, because 
I mean, I like seeing the baby <laughs> in the beginning, um, but also, you know, we just wanted to confirm the due date as well. And we had, so we had always planned on doing that ultrasound around 10 weeks. So she was like, if you want to go ahead and do an ultrasound, you could probably get in as soon as possible just to like, you know, get rid of any fears. I know you really wanted to hear the heartbeat. Um, so we were able to get in the next day. So um, not there. We have to go to like a separate place because they don't do ultrasounds there. Midwives don't. Um, so we went to get our ultrasound and we went in. Um, and again, I had no like literally no thought in my mind that something could be wrong. So we go in, we had Hayden with us. We were all excited. We were going to see the baby. Um, we were planning on like right after telling Matt's family with like the pictures that we were having. It was just like a very exciting day. We finally made it. And I remember thinking that morning um, when we were going to get the ultrasound done, um, you know, again, I hadn't seen, I had no spotting. I had, there was nothing that would indicate that something was off, not a single thing. And I just remember thinking to myself that morning, like, Whew, take a bre deep breath like you made it you made it through the hardest period of like being really sick but like not really confirming that you're pregnant again it's just this weird stage stage and I just remember saying like okay pat yourself on the back like you made it through like we're gonna see the baby today it's gonna be great and now we're gonna like go you know enter this like new chapter of the pregnancy of like we've seen the baby and we're all excited and things are moving along just fine so anyway, we went to the appointment um and we go in and first she did like a um just like a belly ultrasound. Um, I knew that we'd have to do an internal one though. So, you know, we did that first and she was like, I just want to, you know, I'll just try this and see if I can see what we need to see. Um, and then she was like, no, I'm, I'm definitely gonna have to do the internal, which I totally anticipated. So we went ahead and we did the internal exam. Now, um, this lady seemed like very all business. So I couldn't tell. Um, I remember with Hayden, like in the middle of the ultrasound she was like here's your baby like and she like projected it up on the wall and we could see like little Hayden her like little arms and legs squirming and we could like see the heartbeat fluttering and we got like a full like visual of what was going on but she told me this lady was very all business which is fine I guess I mean especially when she has to do things like this um, but she told me from the very beginning, she was like, I'm going to do the full exam. Now, I kind of wonder if she had known when she did the belly exam that there was no heartbeat because she was like, I'm going to do the full exam on the computer. And then when I'm done, I'll turn it and I'll show you the baby. Um, so I was just like, okay. Um, so I was kind of laying there and, you know, it is like the longest two to, I don't even know, five minutes or however long it took. And she's just, you know, clicking, clicking, taking all these like pictures and doing her thing. And she's showing no emotion. And I kept like trying to like look over, but I really could not see the screen from like my vantage point. Um, and I also got the vibe that she like did not want me looking at the screen. So I didn't. And I was just laying there and I remember th starting to get really like anxious, like, oh my god, like, what if something is wrong? Like, I don't know, this lady, she just seems, like, really stoic, um, but that just kind of seemed like her demeanor, and I remember telling myself, like, you're crazy, everything's fine, like, all, everything is lining up just like it did with Aiden's pregnancy, there's literally, there's no reason to be concerned at all. Um, so she finally finishes the exam, and then the crushing blow of, instead of turning the screen like she said she would, she shut off, she took the thing out, she shut everything down, and she said, I'm gonna have to go show these to the radiologist. Now I knew right then and there, I knew that the, the baby was no longer alive. I just, I, I've heard these stories enough. I know how this goes. Um, I haven't been through it myself, but I just, I knew. Um, but you know, it's, it's not confirmed yet. So I was not like crying or like upset. I was just like, so Matt, she was like, why don't you go get dressed and then come back in and, and then we'll be back in a few minutes. So I did, I went and I got dressed and I came back and then I was just alone with Matt and Hayden and he was like, what do you think is going on? And I was just like, this means the baby's not alive. And he was like, well, we don't know that. Like, let's stay positive. And I was just like, okay. Like I wasn't gonna like freak out then and there cause he was right, like we didn't know. So we were just kind of really quiet and like solemn and he could tell that I was like, what is happening? <laughs> but he was still very, he told me afterwards that he still was like, there's there's nothing wrong. Like everything's fine. Um, but again, he, he didn't know what I knew, um, for just cause I had heard stories like this before. So, so then finally she comes back in, not with a radiologist, but she said, I have, um, she said, I have your doctor, but it's actually a midwife, um, on the phone. And then I knew like if someone is giving me, she would have given me good news. She would have showed us the baby, um, because she's allowed to do that, but she is not allowed to make any comments. And then also I forgot to say when she did get up and she was like, I have to show these to the radiologist. I remember saying, 
well, what does that mean? And she was just like, I can't comment. Um, so that's just another detail. Um, so I pick up the phone. It was one of the midwives from the birth center. She was actually a new one that I hadn't, like the only one I hadn't met before because um, she was, had joined since Hayden was born. Um, which kind of sucked because I didn't have a relationship with her, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so she explained to me that um, the baby was no longer alive. Oh, and the baby stopped growing around like eight weeks, five days. And at that point I was exactly 10 weeks. Um, so it had been just over a week since the baby had passed. Um, so this is what's called, sorry if I'm a little emotional. So this is what's called a missed miscarriage. Basically is when the baby passes away, but your body does not register it or recognize it um, for quite some time. Um, so my body apparently still thought I was pregnant. Um, and I still felt extremely pregnant. I had all of the symptoms. Um, in fact, I felt more sick. Like now that I knew that the baby had passed about a week before, that last week leading up to the ultrasound was my sickest week. And I continued to be at that really, really, really sick point for like another week. Um, so I was even sicker after the baby had passed away, which is kind of cruel because, <laughs> I mean, after all that, at least you'd hope for some relief and that your symptoms start to like wane off as your hormone levels come back down. I mean, it is what it is. That was just my experience. Um, so that was really hard. So. Let me back up. So we found out on the phone that I was on the phone. Matt could not hear what was happening, but he saw me immediately like burst into tears. I was trying really hard just to get through the conversation. And I was asking her like, do I need to get a DNC? Like what is going to happen? And she was just like, um, you know, you certainly can, if you'd like, um, you can also do what's called. And she was throwing a lot of info. I mean, she was answering my question. She wasn't throwing a lot of information at me, but I was like not really soaking in hardly any of this, as you can imagine. Um, but she just let me know that you can do what's called expected management and just wait for things to take their course. Um, you know, but why don't you take the weekend? This was a Friday, you know, lay low, rest, and then give us a call or we'll call you on Monday and check in and see where you're at. Now, I just, just quick side note, I am so incredibly grateful for the birth center and the midwives and these women. They were so there for me. Um, I had read some other stories when I was, you know, like I said, I, I was looking for these stories because they really helped when I was going through it. Um, and a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I did come across some that said, you know, once their baby, you know, once they knew they were having a miscarriage, their midwives would like no longer, they had to then go to an OB just for treatment of like to see this thing through, which maybe that's normal. I have no idea. But in my experience, they were so there for me. I was calling them all the time, like whatever midwife was on call and asking them all kinds of questions because it's a really bizarre thing, a mis miscarriage, because you know you're going to miscarry, but you haven't miscarried yet, and like you know it's coming, but you don't know what to expect. It's just, it's kind of crazy. So the other way that you can miscarry, obviously, um, and, I, and I don't know if this is more common. I feel like you hear this more, so I, I have the impression that it's more common, but I honestly have no idea. Um, you just hear that women start bleeding, and then they start bleeding, bleeding more, like they're spotting, and then they bleed more heavily, and all of a sudden they're bleeding a lot, and you know, they go and they, find out that there's no heartbeat then. Um, but there is this other whole other <laughs> option and this is, which is a missed miscarriage, which is what I had. So I'll talk about, about that more in a second, but I just want to finish telling the story of that day. So um, Matt obviously didn't hear what the phone call entailed, but he saw me crying. So he knew, and I had told him like, I think this is what's happening. Um, so he knew. And so we immediately left um, something really adorable. He said, I again, I was like, out of body moment. I had no idea what was going on, but he did say that when I was crying on the phone, it was a short phone call, but he said that Hayden came up and like hugged my legs, which like, oh, it's just like the sweetest. Oh my God. So I love that girl so much. <laughs> so the phone call ended and I was just like, I just need to get out of here. And I just turned to the tech and, um, she honestly was not the nicest lady. And this was actually the first time, which is, this is a side note, but this is the first time she actually like legitimately made eye contact with me the entire like 30 minutes she was treating me, which I find it's just like insult to injury. Like I just wish all healthcare workers had compassion. Apparently that's not the case. It is what it is. Um, but she was kind of rude, but that's fine. Whatever. Um, so I looked at her and I said, is there anything I need to do or can I just leave? And she, she said, you can just leave. And she was like compassionate in that moment. 
Um, so then that's exactly what we did. We hightailed it out of there. Um, Hayden started to cry because I was crying. So I was just like, it's okay, you know, soothing her, pulling it together. And then when we got in the car, I just like totally lost it. Um, just sitting in the front seat, just like what just happened, bawling my eyes out. Um, not only is it such a great loss, but it was a total blindside and just the idea of coming this far in pregnancy and being this sick and having basically like three weeks where I was like not present for life and on the couch, so sick, not working, not doing hardly anything, not able to care for Hayden, like to come through all, all the way through this to find out it's, I mean, all for nothing essentially, just a lot of emotions. Um, so the rest of that day um, is honestly a blur. I think I just sat on the couch. I don't even really remember. I just cried on and off and on and off. I had called my mom. I had let her know what was going on. Um, I didn't talk to anyone else that day. I didn't want to talk to anyone oh, besides Matt. I didn't want to talk to anyone else that day. Um, I think I talked to my dad like the next day and eventually we told um, Matt's dad and, and then eventually his sisters, but uh, I just cried on and off, like sobbing. Um, and then all through the night, I remember I would just wake up in the middle of the night and I would just cry. <sighs> um, and that went on all through, I barely slept. I was just like sobbing um, a lot. <laughs> and I'm like not, I'm not like a crier. I'm not like someone who's like super emotional and like cries easily. It takes a lot for me to cry. I just, I guess it's just my DNA, I don't know. So for me, like that amount of tears, crying on and off for like 12 hours is like a lot for me. Um, and since then, I feel like I really did get like, get it all out for the most part. Since then I have like teared up like I did in this video here and there, but I do feel like I was able to just like let it out, like just let the tears flow and like let the emotions flow through me, which I really wanted to do. I didn't want to like pretend that everything was fine and like, you know, bury that stuff. I really did not want to do that because I, just my personality, I, I can do that. I, I'm good at doing that. <laughs> um, but I didn't. So that was the rest of that day. Um, and then from there on, it was just kind of playing the waiting game. Um, so I will say Miss Miscarriage totally sucks in one regard because you find out that your baby has died essentially um, and that you know this pregnancy is going to come to an end but then you're in this limbo of just like waiting for it to happen um, and that can be really hard especially when you're still really sick um, now there are some options that you can do to like speed along the process and I'm gonna explain those in a second kind of like what options I was facing but I also want to say on the bright side there is a huge blessing about having uh, when it comes to having a missed miscarriage and that is you get to go through and process the loss of your baby um, and then go through the actual experience of the miscarriage totally separately um, which I think is a huge blessing because all of that at once can be really traumatic um, because it is the miscarriage was painful um, and it was a lot and it was just intense um, in some regards and I'll get to all of that um, but that is one huge blessing. So if you're watching this and you've had a miss miscarriage and you're in that waiting period right now, um, I know it sucks, but just try and look at that um, as a bright side because it is a bright side. Um, in one way, it's kind of nice to get it all over with in one fell swoop, but that is, I think, um, I just kept thinking about how I'm just glad that this, um, even though this is terrible, I'm glad that I was able to like process that as like a, just a regular person, not someone who's like going through this like not medical event, but you know what I'm saying. <sighs> okay, so when you're in this waiting period, you do have a couple options. Um, your first option is just to continue to wait, to let na nature take its course because eventually it will. Um, now, my midwives told me that they would give my body about four weeks um, from the passing of the baby, so it already had been just over a week. Um, so I, I could wait for like another three weeks, um, and if still nothing happened, um, they would recommend that I go get a DNC because the longer things go on, you have a greater risk of infection. Um, now I did want to avoid that at all costs because I just wanted to avoid surgery. Um, now the second option is you can take medication, um, Cytotec. Um, it's also called like misoprostol. Uh, so that if you um, have given birth at a hospital, they may have used that on you to help kickstart labor. Um, they might put it on your cervix because it can help to actually dilate your cervix like artificially. Well, not artificially, but you know what I'm saying. Um, 
so that is used a lot of times in birth and it can also a lot of women um, are prescribed it to basically kind of like induce a miscarriage like get your cervix to um, start opening up so that the miscarriage can take place um, so that's another option and then your third option is just you can you can elect to have a DNC right away you can get it scheduled um, you obviously have to talk to an OB and they need to assess your situation and all of that of course but that is an option as well so a DNC is when they just basically you do get put under um, and they go in and they just remove all of the everything the tissue everything um, and so that it's kind of nice in a way because you just get it over with you go in and usually they're able to get everything and it's done and you can start to move on and your body can start to heal and kind of recalibrate um, now the only downside of that is there is a slight chance of scar tissue um, getting built up um, it's not like a huge a ginormous risk um, and then of course there's always a little bit of risk with getting put under um, I just wanted to avoid that I tend to go on the more natural holistic side of things anyway um, now I'm not against medical interventions but that's just tends to be my more my comfort zone and I was totally at peace with getting a DNC if it came down to that if that was really my only my last option I would be totally okay with it um, but I just wanted to give my body a chance to do things that's on its own um, before res resorting to that just because of the tiny like the small risk of scar tissue just after going through this experience I'm like I just don't know if I can physically like handle that little like potential um, odds stacked against me in future pregnancies um, I just don't I just don't want to go there um, now sometimes it's, you have to get a DNC but you know in my case I didn't so I wanted to avoid it if I could but so I waited I, I you know waited the weekend and then on Monday I was just like I talking to the midwives I was just like I need to get this over with like I'm so sick still um, I'm pretty miserable and is there anything that I can do and they and I, and I asked them because I'd done research I said can I take Cytotec and they said you absolutely can they unfortunately don't prescribe it but they were like we can get you in touch with um, some of our like backup OBs at our local hospital and you can go have an appointment made so I was able to get an appointment for that Wednesday so I waited two more days again still sick um, I think around this time I started to feel a little bit better not like death on the couch um, like dying of sickness but not great either but it did start to like improve a little which was like a huge relief so I ended up going in that Wednesday um, and just a heads up if you're going through this experience the OB was really adamant that she did not want to give it to me um, she just really wanted me to get a DNC um, and to be honest she was pretty rude uh, which like when you're going through this experience it's just the last thing you want I really like I didn't get a good uh, <laughs> I didn't get a good batch of healthcare professionals as far as having compassion going through this experience aside from the midwives they were angels but you know it is what it is so she was honestly pretty pretty rude um, and did not want to give it to me because she was just like it's not gonna work and I was like well I've heard all these stories that it has worked I mean I've seen I saw a bunch online there's also a lot of horror stories online so if you're going through this really guard your heart maybe don't search too deep um, but I also had friends in real life who I knew had miscarriage and I was talking to them and they used it and it worked for them and I was kind of like hey why not like why not try it before I go to surgery um, and like if this is gonna kickstart things and I can get it over with sooner like why would I not try it um, that was my so I like kind of fought her on it um, she did end up giving it to me um, and so then I went and had and took it that night um, so this is kind of the start of the more like gory details of the story so if you don't want to hear this um, please turn off the video now um, because I am not going to like sugarcoat it I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened to me and the only reason for that again is because I found it really helpful I had no idea what was gonna happen to my body I had no idea what to look for um, honestly Google is pretty vague um, I kept searching and like looking for more concrete answers and I just couldn't find them um, and the only things that gave me like somewhat concrete information was other women's like testimonies and stories so I'm gonna lay it all out there and I'm gonna tell you everything if you don't want to hear this part this is probably a good time to shut off the video this is your fair warning I'm gonna be talking about blood and tissue and the real things that happen during a miscarriage okay with that being said those of you who are still with me um, okay so 
I took the side attack that night. It was on a Wednesday. And um, you basically, you can take it orally and like put it in your cheeks. I decided to insert vaginally. Um, now, I did like wet the pills a little bit before. They just start to disintegrate really quickly because I just heard that that might help. I don't know if it actually helps. But anyway, so I went ahead. Um, she gave me four pills total. I put up two. And then about an hour later, I added in two more. Um, she said to use all, all four at once. Um, so I just did it. I staggered it over an hour. Um, but it, it wasn't two doses. It was one dose. So then... Um, Nothing really happened. I, I started at around 7 p.m. Nothing really happened. Um, and eventually around 10 we went to bed and I was like a little disappointed. I was hoping like I would at least have some cramps and and I was kind of like, all right, maybe, you know, this just isn't going to work. Maybe this is just nothing's going to happen. So we went to bed and then I woke up around midnight and I was having like some cramps, like what I would describe as like average period cramps, nothing crazy. And I did have like maybe like two or three what I would consider contractions um not super strong not anything that was like crazy intense but i did have like maybe like a handful like two three four over the period of like this night again they weren't that intense um i gave birth when i gave birth to hayden i didn't have an epidural so i feel like i have a good idea of like what's like super intense and what's not and for me they were not intense so um anyway so there was like I went to the bathroom around midnight and I saw that there was blood and I was like sigh of relief the medication worked here we go like it's time to face the music this is happening so um I just kept getting up and like I would lay back down I would get like a weird cramp and I would feel like I had to go to the bathroom and I would go and there was um like blood but it wasn't that much um not anything to what I kept hearing you know that there was going to be like a lot and it really wasn't that much. And I was kind of like, all right, this is like more mild than I was anticipating. Um, and I think around like 5 a.m. Um, I passed like a big, a large piece of tissue. Now, um, again, this is going to be a little gory, but I'm just explaining what happened. So what it looked like, um, honestly, it looked like liver, like the organ. Um, and it was about the size of my palm, maybe a little bit bigger. It was tough, like muscle. It was not a blood clot. It did not, which I was having blood clots come out. Um, it was not, you could not break it apart. It literally felt like it was like hard tissue, almost like muscle. Now, I think that that might have been placenta tissue. I don't know. I will explain the whole story. At the time, I thought that that was, I thought that that was the baby. Um, because the baby at this point is small, but it could be like in a sack. Um, so I didn't think that whole thing was the baby, but I thought the baby was most likely in there. Um, so, because it, it was it was a lot. Uh, it was a big, big thing. <laughs> so anyway, so that was around 5 a.m. And then right after that happened, um, the bleeding like really tapered off. So I was like, okay, I think that was it. I'm like fairly positive that that was it. Like we're good. We're in the clear. The bleeding started to immediately taper. And again, there wasn't that much blood. I didn't have really much in the way of contractions it, overall it was very mild I was like okay that wasn't that bad um so so then the next day again blood continued to taper over like the next five days and then I went down from like normal pads to like little panty liners and I was just like okay we're like moving on I let the midwives know I had appointment scheduled to go you know a little while later go get blood taken to test my hcg and all of that and we were moving forward so the next week, it was actually right around when I was supposed to get my blood taken and I didn't end up going in because I felt horrible. I'd started to feel better, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that, um, during this week. I was like finally getting back to myself. I felt back to myself almost 100%, but not quite. And then on Tuesday, so it was about a week later, I felt horrible. I felt like I got hit by a truck. I felt so achy. I felt incredibly run down. Um, and it was so weird and I was just like, what is going on? And I was on the couch all day that day. I was so just feeling so, so awful. Um, and I didn't think this had anything to do with the miscarriage because I thought it was over. <laughs> it wasn't over, spoiler alert. Um, but it was almost about to be over. So all day I felt awful. And then around like dinner time, a little bit after dinner time, I started having like period cramps. Um, and I was like, okay. Um, this is weird. And then as the night went on, they became like intense period cramps. 
Um, I remember, I don't remember what we were watching. We were watching something. Uh, oh, it was The Bachelor. We were watching, the, so maybe this is Monday. Uh, no, it was, it was Tuesday night because it was like, it was the finale and it was like a two night thing. So this was like the finale of The Bachelor. And I just remember laying there the whole time and I was in a lot of discomfort. Um, they were very, very intense period cramps. They were not contractions because they were straight through. They didn't come on and go away and come on and go away. They were what I would consider very intense period cramps. Some I had, I was like, breathing through them I was like almost getting to the point where I needed to like be like vocal because that would just that helps with you know the pain and discomfort they were intense um and I was just like this is like really bizarre like what is happening to me I don't know but I wasn't freaking out um and then I started to bleed and it was kind of a lot so by the time I was like I think this is just like I don't think it's that big of a deal like I, you know I was googling and it said that blood could when it comes to miscarrying like you, there can be so, a lot some days it can taper and then it can come back and so I was like I don't think this is anything out of the ordinary like so we decided we were gonna go to bed and then we were laying in bed and I was just like I just don't have like a good feeling about this so I decided to call the midwife on call I was afraid that I was maybe hemorrhaging um, that was my concern and I was like there's a lot of blood like almost soaking like a pad an hour um, and I was afraid that she was gonna be like you need to go to the hospital that was what I thought she was gonna tell me so I call and I explain what's going on. I explain what happened to me the week before when I had the miscarriage. And I was explaining that by the time we'd gone to bed, they started to morph into contractions. Now, contractions are, they come on, they get stronger, they get stronger, they get stronger, then they start to like release and then it goes away and you feel nothing, same as birth. So I'm explaining this to the midwife and she is like, Becca, I think, I think you're miscarrying now. I don't think you miscarried last week. Um, she was like, from what I'm hearing, this sounds way more like a miscarriage. And I was like, huh, okay, all right, this is like the never ending process. And she was like, I am so sorry, you know, that you're dealing with this. Um, but she was like, what I want you to do is if you start bleeding even more heavily, um, like soaking two pads an hour, I want you to call me. And then she said, if um, things get like way more painful, I want you to call me. Uh, but she said, but for now, just like you're in labor, I think you, if you want, you can go to sleep or maybe take a hot shower or a hot bath um, and just try and relax. And so I was like, okay. So at that point I was like, I think she's right. Like, I think this is, I think this is the miscarriage because this is what everyone talks about. A lot of blood, like a lot of blood. Um, contractions, like real contractions as if I'm going to birth, you know, which you technically are. And so this went on um, for you know a few hours. I was just trying to sleep and lay in bed and I was kind of in and out of sleep and I would like just feel like there was like a lot of blood and I would like need to get up and go to the bathroom. Um, and then I did also take a shower and I was just like bleeding a lot in the shower and I was passing more of that liver-like tissue, which again, I don't know exactly what that is. Maybe one of you can tell me. Um, my guess is placenta, but I don't know. Um, more of that, not as much as the first time, but still pieces of it um, and you know more of that was coming out but I was still having contractions and I was like I know this isn't over I know in my heart that there is still the baby is still in there um, and it's it's coming out like I knew that this was it I could just I just could t I just could feel it after the shower I would lay down I would get up I would lay down I would get up and then finally um, I think it was around like 1 a.m. I got up, I went to the bathroom and I sat down and um, it felt like I was just the exact thing that um, I experienced when I gave birth to Hayden, when you birth the placenta. Um, again, I didn't have an epidural, I could feel everything. It feels really like squishy and it just kind of like slides out and it's like a really weird feeling. I had that feeling and I immediately looked down and I was like, okay, that's it. Um, it's really hard to explain what I saw. Um, it was just a really, I've heard so many different things of what people are like identifying as like the baby passing. So here's my experience um, for what it's worth. It was large, um, the size of my hand. Uh, it was a lot of tissue. There was like some gray looking, muscular looking stuff. Obviously that was not the baby. The baby was not that big at this point in time. The baby is more like this big. Um, it was somewhere in there. I was not about to like dissect that or go through it. I, I just, nope. Um, I didn't want to personally. Um, but that's what it was like. It was large. It was the biggest thing that had come out of me during this miscarriage. And it was like a lot of tissue and 
bloody red, some gray looking stuff. Um, yeah, that's how it's not a good explanation because it's a really hard thing to, thing to explain, but that's, and I knew, I knew, I just could tell. I was like, that's it. Like it's out, my whole body like kind of relaxed and I didn't have a single contraction after that. They immediately stopped. So I knew that that was, I just knew that that was it. Um, so then after that, um, you continue to bleed. Um, pretty, for me, it was definitely very heavy for like almost a week. It was really heavy. It didn't start to taper until about a week. And then, you know, eventually it just tapers and tapers and tapers. Um, so that's the whole story. Uh, it totally, totally sucked. Um, I was extremely, we were all extremely crushed when um when i found out um we had also i don't know if i mentioned this but like the sunday before so it was like five days before we had the ultrasound we had told my family my my mom had known because she had come over one day and we just told her um, but my dad and my sister we had told them um and like i said we were planning on telling matt's family that day so it was just like a really exciting time where it was starting to get out we were just so excited and then this huge blind side um and it was really it sucked. I mean, it was crushing. It was so awful. Um, but I will say, you know, I am always someone who tries to look on the bright side and I will say, even though I wouldn't wish this on anyone, I would give anything to still be pregnant with that baby right now. Um, it does really help put things in perspective and it really makes you grateful for what you have. So I just want to say, if you are going through this right now, um, I am sending you all of my love and all of my strength. It is so hard, but you will be and you are stronger for it. It does change you um, for the better, honestly, because it just helps so much with gratitude and being grateful for what you have. I'm so incredibly grateful that I have a healthy baby girl. She is the light of our lives. She brings us so much joy. And just the fact that she's here on earth now kind of feels like a miracle and I'm so grateful for that. I'm also so incredibly grateful that I know my body is capable of a healthy pregnancy. I know that we will have more babies. I know that we will. Um, this is just something that we, you know, are going through, but we are getting through it and there are absolutely brighter days ahead. And I so look forward to those brighter days and I so look forward to all of our future babies that I know um, that we will have here on earth with us. Um, and now we have a little uh, angel baby in heaven who is looking down on us, which I'd much rather have them here. But if there's anywhere they're going to be but here, heaven certainly is not a bad place. So I think that is all I have for this video. Um, this is not an easy story to tell, but um, I'm glad to get it out there. Um, and I just want to say, uh, when I talked about this on Instagram, because I've already talked about this on Instagram, YouTube is now hearing the second if you don't follow me there. But I got a lot of people telling me that I was so brave for sharing my story. And while I do think that that's true it's a hard thing to to share about and to open up about and to be honest about um and it is important because it helps other women you know i i totally see all of that but i also just want to say if you are out there and you've gone through a miscarriage and you didn't shout it from the roof to rooftops and share it <laughs> you are also so brave it is brave to go through this Either way, whether you go through and you, you open up and you tell everyone, that's brave. Or if you walk through it and you tell hardly anyone and you keep it to yourself, that too is so brave because it is a really, really hard thing to go through. And it's a really tough, very personal decision on whether or not you want to keep it very private and to yourself or whether or not you want to share it with others. So I just want to say, if you've gone through this, I don't want you to think that you're anything less if you didn't share about your experience. Um, you are brave either way and either way it sucks and either way it's hard and we're all just trying to get through it the way the best way that we can thank you guys for watching this video again if you are currently going through this and that's why you stumbled upon this video i am sending you all all of my love so much love so much positivity so much light remember that there are brighter days ahead and you will get through this and you will be stronger for it but thank you guys again for watching this. Um, I hope to see you in my next video. I am excited to get 
back to normal working life um, and get back to creating content for you guys and sharing bits and pieces of our life with you guys. Um, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, also follow me on Instagram, you know, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.